Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk about the steps involved in designing a mixed methods study. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. My name is Evan Ortlieb. So first what we want to think about is uh, laying out a definition, a working definition for mixed methods research. And it's really a research approach that's inc becoming increasingly popular both in social, behavioral, and in the health sciences alike where we integrate quantitative and qualitative data into a single study. Um, so typically quantitative um, research involves numbers and qualitative research really gets around personal experiences. And we're trying to combine those in order to make sense of a particular topic or phenomena. As I said before, the growing popularity is evidenced by two things in particular, NIH funding and a 600% increase uh, in mixed methods uh, research studies over the last 10 years, as well as in dissertations published uh, with about 400% increase in the last five years alone. And so I think it's well on its way, uh, not only in becoming popular, but also in becoming a third um, type of research uh, that we can conduct other than qualitative and quali quantitative and qualitative alone. Think about questions that are going to guide our particular project design. And those really start in and around the idea of, you know, do we have uh, 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 data that merits a mixed methods design? And, and, you know, does that include quantitative data in terms of closed ended? It could be a survey information where you filled in, uh, you know, choices A, B, C, or D in terms of Likert scales. It could be test scores, it could be all those sorts of things. Uh, qualitative data are more open-ended. Maybe you asked questions, uh, soliciting feedback on a survey that was open-ended. Maybe you did interviews, maybe you did focus groups and the like. Uh, and then thinking about issues around integration. How are, how are those data going to come together uh, at different parts of the study and not just at the end alone? And then really uh, other kinds of procedures on how the design will work. What will, what will start, what will follow? Uh, are they going to be sequential? Is it going to be concurrent design where you uh, collect both types of data at the same time? All those sorts of uh, things are considerations within procedures for mixed methods research. Some of the signs um, that might be evident where you don't need a mixed methods design uh, are when you may keep data separate throughout the course of um, collection and analysis without any integration whatsoever. Uh, when you're just trying to collect all the data available, I'm going to do surveys, focus groups, this, this, and this, and that, and there's no real clear design that merits specifically mixed methods research. When you're trying to do multiple forms of quantitative uh, or multiple forms of qualitative data, oftentimes that can be more of a multi-method design, which is a little bit different than mixed methods because there's no mixing that actually occurs. Um, the fourth one, is around transforming data only at the end. That's not what, what we really seek here. Let's say, for example, uh, you uh, gave a quantitative survey and you were looking at the analysis of that and the, and the results there. And let's say that you found uh, some, some results there. You wanted to hone in on those specific results in the second phase of the project. Um, so that would really transform your overall study right in the middle of things. And finally, uh, just adding in the other, right, uh, the quantitative or qualitative, just because, or just because it's a trendy thing to do, is not really something that merits mixed methods design research. One consideration we have to uh, think about is, do our research questions align to our specific study? For example, uh, <clears throat> some types of research are insufficient to really answer those research questions, and we need mixed methods or additional methods to try to answer that. So for example, further explanation may be needed before we can administer instruments or surveys or tests to particular students um, nationwide, for example. Talking to people may be necessary to explain our statistical results. So maybe we found a correlation between reading motivation and achievement scores, but we want to figure out what are the nuances there, what led to the motivation, what, you know, what, what's the, the essence of why that correlation exists. Uh, another one is matching quantitative and qualitative results. <clears throat> Sometimes you may have uh, results from a number of different things and you need to be able to combine that in order to really make sense of that particular topic. Fourth is talking to people uh, to really enhance our experiments. Oftentimes 
in the field of education in particular. We can't do true um, uh, experiments, but we do quasi-experimental research all the time, and, and talking to people can really get at more than just numbers can alone. The fifth and final one is gathering qualitative data to try to help develop our new instruments. So seeking feedback on the qualitative level oftentimes can improve our quantitative research accordingly. Also, we need to think about what are our primary uh, intentions with this research? So <clears throat> is it, for example, are we trying to look for a relationship or uh, what are the factors involved in X, Y, and Z, or what are the causes or influence and effects of all these kinds of research? That lends itself more towards a quantitative focus. On the other hand, qualitative focus really gets around generation or creation uh, and, and trying to figure out meaning and personal experiences. Those key words are really targets uh, that we try to seek out in terms of our research questions and, and even in the ways in which we try to answer those. For example, some general intentions or general intent statements could include the following. This article reports on the study conducted to understand students' motivation to enroll in a fully online doctoral degree offered at St. John's University. So that um, study right there is going to look at the, the, the alignment between students' motivation and maybe their success or their enrollment. The second one is around conducted. Uh, we conducted an interview-based study of high-achieving graduate students who returned after teaching for 20 years. So that's gonna be more nuanced, more qualitative uh, investigations there. And the final one is our aim was to understand teachers' experiences transitioning from other fields to teaching in New York City public schools. For example, here we have the New York City teaching fellows who have changed careers and now they're uh, in the field of education. And then we're trying to determine the aspects of those experiences that contribute to effective transitions from another discipline into the field of education. We need to, we need to slowly go through data collection and analysis considerations. There are very many, and I think it's necessary to go through this process in order to really ensure that we can design an effective mixed method study. The first is, I'm all about alignment. And so we need to think about what are our data sources for both the quantitative elements of the study for data collection, as well as the qualitative ones. So when we think about the setting, are both of those phases of the project going to occur in the same setting or a different one? Are we going to use the same number of participants? Maybe we survey 200 students, and then maybe we do a focus group with eight students. So the number of participants could, could vary. It could even be different ones, or it could be a subset for one of the phases. The third is around instrumentation, or we, you know, what are the valid and highly reliable instruments we're going to do? Are we going to create our own instruments as well to augment those other formal ones from an informal capacity? Those are considerations we need to think about. And finally, scales and questions. Uh, do we create subscales? for uh, some kind of factor analysis that we can do later on uh, in order to group certain questions into a larger theme, so to speak. Then from there, once we align our data collection and analysis, we need to further align those to our research questions. So this is one small example of a recent um, doctoral student at St. John's University. And here was her matrix where she aligned three research, research questions to various kinds of data collection and analysis. So we'll just go through, uh, let's go through the second one just for, uh, for, for the purposes of this sake. So does task value, self-confidence, and literacy out loud predict students' total motivation score when using a scripted curriculum uh, as well as a workshop model? So for the data collection on uh, uh, the quantitative component, uh, she was looking at using a, um, a tried and true uh, survey in our field called the Me and My Reading Profile. And then the data analysis follow-up, she was going to be doing a factor analysis as well as looking at correlations between uh, specific uh, student answers to different questions. So uh, after that, as well as research question one, she was going to follow that up uh, with looking at uh, what are teacher beliefs about those factors. So she was going to do a focus group and code those uh, according to emergent themes. So this particular mixed methods design, she started with the quantitative information and based upon that factor analysis and correlational analysis, she was able to come up with survey questions uh, to ask teachers and to follow up with them from a qualitative standpoint. 
We also need to think about framing your study and we need four considerations here, I think. The first is around your paradigm and sometimes it's hard to really define what a paradigm is. And a paradigm is really your particular worldview on something. And, um, and, and so this worldview oftentimes can be a positivist one or an interpretive one. A positivist is a researcher who really sees oneself as an outsider and you're trying to look in on a different, a different environment, a different uh, type of activity, and you see yourself as separate, and you don't really have relations with <clears throat> whatever that is. Um, you, you're, an, you're an outsider looking in, and you're trying to explain something, as opposed to an interpretivist uh, is someone who sees yourself from the inside, and you're part of that group, part of the circle, trying to interpret the world around you. And that's basically your epistemological stance. The second is around your theoretical lens, and there are many of these. I just noted one example here of a socio-constructivist. There's socio-cultural ones, there's constructivist. There's many different types of theoretical lenses, and we're trying to see alignment between the paradigm that you're going to use, the theoretical lens, and the methodological approach, as well as your data collection methods. <clears throat> so from a methodological approach, one of the uh, specific designs that we're going to look at this semester is around sequential transformative mixed methods design. And this particular approach um, really looks at, um, uh, they're not concurrent, so you have one phase that's going to inform the second phase and you're going to make some decisions such as the previous ones that I alluded to. And finally, data collection methods, there are many, many out there. And I would highly encourage you to, to find one of those PDFs that are available that show you a number of different qualitative methods, a number of different quantitative methods to see which ones might mesh and be able to mix appropriately to answer your research questions. Next, we have uh, really choosing your design. And so some of the considerations that you need to contemplate are around your particular um, community of scholars, right? What kinds of research is most valued? In some circles, it's purely qualitative research. In other ones, it's purely quantitative. Uh, oftentimes in social sciences, you have more of a qualitative feel to things. In more of the hard sciences, the opposite, you're more of a quantitative. And I think growing, as we were talking about before, is the field of mixed methods. So how might that be able to augment and make the most of both of those uh, types of methods? The second is around your particular skill base. Are you more savvy in one of those two, in quantitative methods and qualitative methods? We all have room to grow but typically we lean one way or another in terms of what is our comfort zone. The third is around considering your resources available to you. Uh, if there's a time consideration, you may have to be able to uh, collect the data concurrently at the same time, simultaneously. Whereas if you have more time, uh, then maybe it might be better to do it sequentially to really optimize your, your outcomes and results. And then fourth is around the considering the complexity of the design. How, what would really, uh, permit you to have success with this project. You need to fully understand it, you need to grasp it, and it has to be aligned directly back to answer your research questions and be uh, well suited for the population with which you're studying. Also, you need to be able to draw this in a flow chart, whether on paper uh, as well as electronically. I've provided two examples here. Uh, the first is convergent parallel design where you will collect and analyze a quantitative piece as well as a qualitative piece. You're going to look, look at those results and then merge those for comparison and look for convergence as well as uh, divergence uh, at the end. The second example I provide here is around explanatory sequential design. So in this example, you're going to collect and analyze the quantitative component in that data set. And then you're going to make some um, decisions based on uh, what, what you tried to explain with that data set in order to inform your data collection and analysis in the qualitative component, get those results, interpret that, and then try to meld all that together at the end as well. So also uh, another thing that uh, most researchers are extremely limited in doing is being succinct. And when we write our purpose statements, whether it's in the abstract of the paper, whether it's in a dissertation or even a scholarly journal article, we need to be succinct and we need to be proficient with the words we use. So some of the uh, elements that we need to include are the intention, the design, how you're going to collect the data, as well as the overall rationale. And typically we can do that in one paragraph. Here's an example. This, this myth, mixed method study will address blank. A convergent parallel mixed methods design will be used 
And it's a type of design in which qualitative and quantitative data are collected in parallel, analyzed separately, and then merged. In this study, quant quantitative data will be used to test the theory blank that predicts this variable will positively influence the other variable for X number of participants at this particular site. Uh, the qualitative data will explore the central phenomena for X participants at this site. And the reason for collecting both of these types of data is to mix them according to get this particular outcome that we seek. So this is sort of a template that can be used uh, for writing purpose statements. Second is around writing research questions. So related to the purpose statement is having a clear uh, an easily comprehensible research question. For a convergent design, some, an example could include, to what extent did the quantitative and qualitative research converge? For an explanatory design, you might think about, in what ways do qualitative data help explain the quantitative results? And an exploratory study, in what ways do the quantitative results generalize the qualitative findings? And eventually what we're trying to do is put all of this together in a particular order or sequence that makes sense towards our dissertation project, towards our research proposal for a grant we're trying to get, or whatever the purpose is. And one particular logical order is as follows. Starting with the problem, the theory and the philosophy will, that will guide your particular investigation, and the purpose of the study of this project giving the rationale for why we're collecting both quantitative and qualitative data, specifically specifying um, our quantitative and qualitative, as well as mixed research questions. Again, that alignment exists. The types of analysis that you will use to uh, make sense of that data set, and then providing a working or operational definition for your mixed methods research project in this case, and then providing your overall design, that flowchart, and, and or a diagram of this design so that anybody can look at it and make sense of it, not just looking at the text alone. So again, I encourage you to continue to learn more about the steps involved in mixed methods research as we continue forward this semester. I wish you all the best and take care.